All right, so my power is out, so hopefully I can record this video before my laptop dies, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we have an ascending chain of sigma algebras, and we want to prove that the union is an algebra. Okay, so let's start with that. Um, so let, suppose we have this chain, I'm not going to rewrite it, but let F be the union of the FIs. We have to prove that F is an algebra. Um, so let's see here, we got to prove closure under complements and closure under pairwise unions. So suppose we have a set A which is in F. Then A must be in some fi. All right. Then a complement is going to be in fi because fi is a sigma algebra, but fi is a subset of f because f is the union of the fi's. So, um, therefore, uh, we have closure under complements. So all we need now is unions, so let A and B be in F. Then similar idea, A is in Fi and B is in Fj for some I and J. And now we're gonna assume without less without loss of generality, that i is greater than or equal to j. Because certainly either, between i and j, one is the one of these indices is the bigger one. So it does the order doesn't really matter, so we'll just assume that i is the bigger one. Then a and b are both in fi, because fj is contained in Fi because this is an ascending chain of sigma algebras. So A union B is in Fi because Fi is a sigma algebra, so it's closed under union unions, then this is contained in F. So thus F is an algebra because it's closed under complements and finite unions. Well, pairwise unions, which can always be extended to finite unions just by induction. All right, and then the next one is give an example to show that the union need not be a sigma algebra. Um, and this actually took a little bit for me to come up with something. The thing is, sigma algebras are sort of weird to think about because it's sort of like, like in topologies, Topologies are sort of nice because you have open sets and you can just take unions of things. But with uh, sigma algebras, you can take complements. And so you can end up with a whole bunch of different things. So I had to think about this. So, but anyways, so here's what I came up with. So in the integers, let fi be the sigma algebra generated by the power set of the integers minus i to i. So fi consists of all subsets of negative i all the way up to i, all subsets of this set, uh, all subsets of this subset of the integers, but it also contains their complements. Um, and anything you can do by taking um, unions and intersections of these complements. Um, but the main idea is that, and what we're really going to use here is that an element of Fi is either going to contain all integers less than minus i and greater than i, or it's going to contain none of them. 
because if you take any subset of the integers from minus i all the way up to i, then this subset will not contain any of the integers less than minus i minus 1, or any integer strictly less than minus i and any integers greater than i. These integers cannot be included in this set. But then if you take the complement of a subset of um, minus i up to i, then you suddenly include all of the integers which are less than minus i and greater than i. And then by taking unions and intersections of these types of sets, um, you can either like include all of those integers below minus i and above i, or you could exclude them all. Um, and that's the fact that we're really going to use. Um, so, but what we have here is that f1 is contained in f2, which is contained in blah, blah, blah. And that's because, let's see here, so if you have any, um, and this is because the power set of minus i up to i is contained in the power set of minus i minus yeah each each one of these is contained in the net in the next any subset of or any element of the power set of minus i up to i is contained in the power set of minus i minus one up to i plus one and so because of that f i will be contained in f i plus one. Okay, so we have this fact, and so we have an ascending chain of sigma algebras. Now we're going to let A be the set of natural numbers, which, as I like to harp on a lot, is all in positive integers starting at 1. I don't include 0 in the natural numbers, because I don't like it. All right, so we have this set and now if a i is just the set containing i then a i is an element of f i because f i is generated by the power set from minus one or from minus i to i and so the singleton set i is an element of that power set and so a i is an f i. So a i is an f i which is contained in f. So a is equal to the union over all the i's of the a i, right? Because you just include all of the positive integers one by one, or strictly positive integers. So a is the union of the a i's. shows that A is a countable union of elements of F. And so if F is a sigma algebra, then it has to contain A because it has to be closed under countable unions. Um, So now, if A is in F, then A must be in Fi for some I. But, let's see here, so what's the issue here? Any element of f i which contains um, i plus 1 i plus 2 onwards must also contain minus i minus 1 and then minus i minus 2 etc for the for the reason that I talked about because you, you're you're generated by the power set of minus i to i, so you've got to either include everything else outside of that set, or you can't include anything. And these negative integers are not contained in a. 
So A cannot possibly be an FI for any I. So therefore, A cannot be an F. Thus, A is not an F. And hence, F is need not be well I'll I'll just I'll just explain the conclusion. So we've we've given an example of a of a ascending chain of sigma algebras such that the union of the sigma algebras is not a sigma algebra. And so therefore it need not be the case that the union of an ascending chain of sigma algebras is itself a sigma algebra. It will be an algebra, but it need not be a sigma algebra. And yeah, that's about all there is to this proof. I don't know if you were writing this up for a class. I sort of explained the fact that um, an element of the power set of the an element of the sigma algebra generated by the power set of the integers from minus i to i, the fact that elements of the sigma algebra either include all of the integers outside of minus i to i or they don't, um, that that argument that I give seems a little hand wavy. Um, I don't know if many, if some professors might not like that sort of argument. Um, I don't, I don't even know if I really like it all that much because elements of a sigma algebra generated by set are sort of difficult to get your hands on. I think there is some uh, characterization out there like maybe it's um, countable unions of finite intersections or I forget how it goes. Um, I think there is some way to characterize elements of a sigma algebra generated by a set um, that you could use, but it's non... Like, I'd have to think about it a little bit. And yeah, sigma algebras are just sort of difficult to think about sometimes. Um, so this is a little bit of a hand-wavy proof. But, I mean, I don't... I, I think it's clear enough that I don't want to go into more details about it. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, this is my example that I'm using to prove part two. And so we are done with the exercise.